Okay, welcome to our first lesson in Unit 6 on the normal distribution. Um, so we're looking at um, this this example. And so this example I just thought was so interesting. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, like when you, in, in the Olympics, um, there is no ties. Uh, they can just get it so accurate that they can keep measuring closer and closer. Um, in swimming, there's actually ties, but in running, there isn't. And so... Um, I just thought that this example was so neat. Um, so this is this is actually a situation in 2012 where um, eight runners were were lining up to go to the Olympics, and the top three run runners would have gone. Um, and first and second went by, um, but then there was a tie for third place. Um, the cameras couldn't decide a winner. It's the first time it ever happened. They didn't even know what to do. Um, and so, like you can you can go ahead and read uh, if you're interested exactly what happened. But I just thought this was so interesting. And the question is, is it actually possible to tie? So if we got cameras that were a little bit more clear, um, is it possible to tie? And so this is a similar question. When a company fills an aluminum can with pop, they advertise 355 milliliters, and they they actually set it for 355 a liquid. And so the question is, what's the probability that actually has 355? So when I ask this question, a lot of people think about, well, maybe it's like zero because it doesn't actually fill right up to the top. Um, and then some other people think, well, it's 100% because like every can has 355. Uh, the question is like, is based on like a, a continuous variable. And so that's what we're going to be talking today. And... Um, and like, what's the probability that you're exactly 355? Uh, it needs a little bit more um, more understanding to like answer that question. Um, so what we're really looking at today is the difference between continuous and discrete. Um, doing uh, recognizing probabilities um, of a specific value like 355. Uh, how, how do you calculate that? And um, uh, just identifying probability strategies for continuous and discrete. Uh, with the focus really being on continuous, and so we're going to be looking at some calculating some probabilities again for continuous variables. Uh, so just as a review, this came up before when we talked about types of data. Uh, how many days of work do you week? Uh, uh, days a week do you work? Uh, how long does it take you to get to school? Um, these are ideas like for collecting numerical data, um, but we've got two types of data: continuous and discrete. Um, discrete data. Uh, sorry. The, the two different, the difference is if you're like measuring or counting. And so in continuous data, you're always obtaining it by measuring. Um, you can measure it in different ways, uh, like like measuring it on uh, like a meter stick or a timer, accurate as possible, as quick as possible. Um, but because there's always a data point that can exist between two data points. And so this is the point in the, in the sprint and the, why, why it never happened in, um, in sprinting before in the Olympics, um, there's always a possibility to get closer. Uh, there's always a possibility that you can be closer to 355 milliliters um, without actually like being exactly there. And so um, we actually uh, measure, like we organize the data into intervals. Um, so for example, how long does it take you to school? Uh, you could Your answer could be 20 minutes, but like you have to pick like a time. And so if you're organizing in intervals, um, it's not really, doesn't really matter if we say, well, where does the 20 minute time go? Because like you're, you're always going to be able to say you're under 20 or over 20. Uh, you're actually never at 20. Uh, it's just accuracy of the time. Discrete data. We, we spent the first half of the course talking about. So there's finite number of possibilities. So how many, how many heads can you get when you flip a coin three times? Uh, what percentage you score in your G1 test? Uh, it's just a score between 0 and 40. You can't get 39.999. Um, when and This is just really quick, but when you're calculating probability uh, with discrete data, you can do it by counting. So N of A divided by N of S. Um, all of these numbers are exact values um, of, of how many times a 1 is going to come up out of the total, uh, say, 8. Um, but the but the focus of this core this unit is going to be on continuous data, um, and we're actually going to be calculating um, data on an interval. And so, 
Um, a continuous probability density graph, that's going to be the goal of this unit, is to get one of these. Uh, and it really looks like a histogram, but it's, it's really, it's a lot nicer than that. Um, it shows us a percentage or probability of different amounts um, of ex occurring, except the histogram is shown in intervals. And so, whereas like this histogram was shown on like actual values, um, the histogram here is going to be shown in intervals, just like we saw with the histogram last unit. We can find the probability by finding the area of the graph. That's all we have to do. Um, and so if we have bars, we're just, we're just doing areas of rectangles. Um, what makes the probability density graph useful versus a histogram is the area adds to 1, um, so 100%. Uh, and it's most easily seen in uniform distribution distributed data. So what we have here is um, uh, intervals from 0 to 10, 0, 1, um, 1, 2, and like every, every area you can see is 10%. Um, base times height is 1 times 0.1 is 10%. And the area of the whole thing is 10 times 0.1, which is 1. So we can answer a whole bunch of questions just from the area. And so things like, what's the probability that you're between 2 and 5? Um, and so this is wait, wait times for a subway train. And, and so we've just said it goes from 0 to 10. Um, and, and I made it very simple here so that it, it will add up to 1. We'll talk about that in a second. But like just looking at answering these questions between two and five, you can see what percent is between two and five. And you can see it's the three three bars or thirty percent. What what's the probability that wait time is more than six? You can see the four bars that are more than six, so forty percent. Less than two and a half, so you can see um, this two and a half number, which is two and a half bars exactly, so twenty five percent, and exactly four minutes. So right here. You don't have a weight width, and so you you have a you have a ten percent, but you can't multiply that by anything. So the the width is actually zero, and so the answer there is is zero. It's impossible to have a, a wait time exactly four minutes. Going back to the pop can question, it's impossible to have a pop can exactly three hundred fifty five milliliters. Going back to the ties, it's impossible to tie a race. Um, Here's one that's a little different. Um, the height of each bar is 0 0.1428. Um, so it's, it is uniform. And so we're just saying like high school teachers, um, there's an equal amount between 25 and 30 and every, every five year range. Uh, so their ages. And so um, th I just made up this, this data, but, um, but just to show you, this is 0 0.1428. Notice that like the area is not actually add up to hundred. Um, and so, like the area, the interval width is not one. Um, and so like uh, you could still use this data, but what we're going to do is, is just kind of lay the found foundation for what we're going to do later on in the unit, uh, which is like, look at Z scores. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to call each one of these values a score. And we're just going to call 25 zero um, just for the sake of easy uh, easiness. We're going to call 31, 35, two, 43, 45, 4, 50, 55, and 60. And then notice how we had we have seven bars. So um, like 60 is going to be the, the seven. And so you can see a length of seven times a height. And that gives us 100%. Um, and so that's actually why we're going to do this. Um, the total area under the curve right now is five. Um, but we want it to be one. Um, just so that we can then just, just like we did the last example, uh, calculate some percentages pretty easily. All right, now you can calculate percentages pretty easily with this. I like to do this just to show you, um, and so we're going to look at the new graph here. I, I like to do this just because it's consistent with what we're going to call um, uh, calculating Z scores or normalizing the data later on. But we're just looking at it for uniform. Um, now the height of each bar is 0.1428, so we're going to answer some questions. Um, and so notice that the probability is now one. What's the probability that a random teacher from high school is older than 45 years old? Uh, so 45, we know it's 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So older than 45 is going to be the four and bit or four bigger, and it's going to be three bars out of seven. So three out of seven, or three times 0.1428. Between 35 and 55. 
or the, is the numbers between 2 and 6. Because uh, remember, this is 25, 30, 35, and it goes to 60. So between 2 and 6, we got 1, 2, 3, 4 bars, um, and a total of a height of 0 0.1428. So we can do 4 over 7, or 4 times 0 0.1428. And exactly 40 years old. Um, so uh, 25, 30, 35, 40. So at 3, there's no area at 3. So it's 0%. So a common question for discrete um, really asks you the question, like, what's the, we, we ask, in distributions, we ask, like, what's the probability of you getting less than two heads? And so we can say that by writing, um, sorry, um, by writing less than or equal to two. Um, sorry, what's the probability of two or less heads? Um, and we notice that that's different than what's the probability of less than two. So for the first one, we can write less than or equal to two. The second one, we can write less than two. Um, and less than 2 is actually the same as less than or equal to 1. It's 1 or less. For continuous, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, you can't just throw out less than or equal less than 2 as the same as less than or equal to 1 because there's all sorts of um, intervals between there. You have to look at the area of the bars. So for continuous, um, uh, everything, everything less than a number is, is sorry, a probability of a specific value zero, the probability that a number is less than a certain number is the same as less than or equal to. Uh, so less than two is the same as less than or equal to two. The area is the same. Um, it's kind of nice for continuous because it doesn't matter if you say less than or less than or equal to. Uh, it's the same thing. Some challenges with continuous variables. Um, so continuous variables don't have theoretical probabilities associated with them. Um, because we're looking at things that are actually happening. And so in our last unit, we really talked about sampling and uh, taking a histogram and things like that. Um, the length of time you get to school can only be modeled after you sample the time it takes you to get to school. There's going to be some variability. Um, and so that requires us to use mean and standard deviation. And we're going to see that throughout the rest of the unit. And for a lot of things, we're going to actually going to assume that they're normally distributed about the mean. Now we're going to look more at that um, really throughout the next few lessons. In lesson four, I, I have some funny data. I'll talk about it in lesson four. Um, I, I made up some data, and, and it doesn't really work, but it's kind of neat. Um, so we're going to look at hurricane wind speeds. It's impossible to calculate the theoretical probability of a hurricane having a wind speed greater than a certain amount. So the best we can do is base it on a data that we've had in the past and just assume that if we've got more data, then, then like the law of large numbers will, will happen. But we just have experimental data to go with. Um, and we have to have our sample representing the population. It might not be as accurate. Um, and, and often we're going to take it from different sources. Okay.